What we have in front of us here today is a key fob for a Citroen Xantia. I'm just going to read you the accompanying uh, email that came with this. It says here, Hello, I came across your YouTube channel and wondered if you might be able to help. I have a Citroen Xantia where one of the key fob buttons has detached from the circuit board. I have highlighted the area of damage in red to illustrate. The switch is soldered on the board in four positions and there is a short length of track which has detached from the board. Is it possible to repair this damage and reattach a new switch? So that's the, uh, the message that we had on the server. What we're going to do is we're going to go under the microscope and uh, we're going to have a closer look at this and uh, see what it is exactly uh, that we're dealing with and what, what it is that needs to be done. Now, before I go any further, I just want to say there's usually uh, a barcode which is located in this area here. And um, before you start working on these uh, key fobs, I recommend that you heat up that barcode slightly with a heat gun at about 200 degrees not too close and then just uh, remove it from the board and put it inside a little packet like this right and then return it back to the customer because that barcode may be needed when they want to renew or remake a key or they may need it for something so just be careful of that make sure you do that before you start working on the key right let's go under the microscope and let's have a closer look before we have a closer look at the key fob, what I've got here on the screen is a picture of what a working key fob or a functional key fob should look like. So I just want to zoom in on this so you can have a better idea when we look at the our, our key fob under the microscope, what the extent of the damage is. So if you have a look here, you've got a, a battery here, you've got one switch here and you've got a second switch here so if you look closely there's two anchor points on this switch there's one here and there's one here those anchor points do not have any electrical function they are strictly or only used to hold the switch down onto the board and you now you can't see it here but there are two sections here one here and one here these are part of the electrical function of the switch and they close the circuit when the button is pressed so they would have tracks going down into the board and into the circuit of the board so i just wanted to show you this beforehand and what we'll do is we'll now look at the fob that has been sent to us and we'll be able to work out how much work needs to be done and exactly what we need to do so let's do that now. So here's the fab under the microscope and we're just going to have a quick look over the board and see what the condition is. It doesn't look too bad on this side. There's a bit of dirt and debris which is normal. These key fobs are quite old now. But there's nothing too significant that can't be cleaned up with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a brush. So that's the front side of the fob and then um, yep nothing significant nothing stands out to me here now if we switch over to the back side okay you have the battery which is located here okay and then we've got a couple of components here looks like some erosion around here okay and then we've got okay this is where the problem starts so as you can see here, let me just get my tweezers. Right, so let's go back up here. Now, this is the first switch. As you can see, it's anchored onto the board from these two points here, point number one and point number two. As I say, these two points, they don't have any electrical function. It's just to anchor the uh, the switch onto the board. 
So that's fine. And then at the back here, let's have a look. We can see that the switch is soldered onto the board from these two points here. And these two points are where the circuit is closed when the button is pressed. So the switch that would have been next to it would have been here. Uh, let me just break this down for you a little bit. Would have been anchored on from this point here, and then it would have been anchored on from this point here. Where you can see here, there is no tab or strip left. So this is obviously ripped off with the switch. Uh, Gluing another pad back on here would not have the same strength as it would from the factory. So I might have to find a different solution for this, which I'll talk about a bit later on. The contact point for the back of the switch, the first contact point would have been here, and that was coming out from this point here. So it would have come up here, and it would have been around here, and it would have been soldered onto the back of the switch. Well, what's happened here is this uh, has been torn off. When that switch broke off, this piece has been torn off. Luckily, we still have the uh, original uh, traces here, part of the original trace here. But what it is, if we take, uh, if we put a pad in, if we put a trace in from here to here, only thing that I'm worried about is that it will raise the height of the switch. And what I want to do is I want to keep the switch as flat to the board as possible because once I clean all this up, I would like to glue the switch on first and then uh, solder all the points on. And uh, so I might not take the pad from here. I might drill a hole here or somewhere around here and bring a new trace in from the other side of the board. This would have been the second point of the switch here. And as you can see, part of the switch is still here when it ripped off. So these two, thankfully, are still OK. We're going to have to work on something here to anchor it down. And uh, we're going to have to work on this point here. So that's basically the extent of the damage. Now, what I would normally do, or what I do sometimes do, is I'll put this through uh, an ultrasonic bath to clean off all the dirt. But because this key is quite old, I don't want to disturb any of the other components or any of the solder which is around the board and those micro bubbles in an ultrasonic bath they can sometimes cause problems so with this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol and a brush and I'm going to give it a good clean and then what we can do is we can start removing uh, the remaining solder and the bits of metal that were here clean this bit up and uh, then we can start working on it so let's do that now. Actually, before we do that, let me just show you something else. So if you're doing one of these repairs, this will help you as well. If you're doing this repair and you need to order these switches, which you will need, then if you get onto eBay and if you type in two edge switches for Citroen Xantia key fob, like it's written here, or Citroen Xantia key fob switches, you should get a host of these that will come up and this seller here is selling them for $3.99 each but I did see another listing where you could get like um, up to 20 of them I think or 10 of them for about five or six pounds so do shop around a little bit another place that you can look for them is uh, AliExpress uh, it just depends how long you want to wait if you need them emergency then obviously eBay will be a better choice but if you're willing to wait a little bit then you can get them for cheaper from AliExpress. And this is exactly what they look like. I'll just zoom in a little bit. As you can see here, two anchor points on the front, two contact points on the back, and the switch is here. So I've managed to clean up the board now with some isopropyl and a brush. And now you can clearly see the extent of the damage. The trace from here has been ripped off. Uh, the, this is part of the switch which has remained here and we've got a, an anchor point here at the front and then this part, this anchor point here has also been stripped off. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to get some solder braid and uh, put some solder on here and remove these and clean all of these up and get it ready 
to install the switch, the new switch. And then we can think about how we're going to bring in uh, a new trace here for this point here. And we'll take it from there. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use some flux here. And we're going to flood this area here. So our solder flows on cleanly once we apply it. And today I'm using Topnik AG5, which is a good flux for SMD components and it doesn't leave much residue. So I've got the soldering iron set to about 350 degrees and I'm just going to apply some solder to these points here. So here it goes. Okay, let's put some here as well. Okay, and then what we're going to do now is I'm going to use a solder braid and I'm going to suck up all of that solder that's left on the board. Now, a little tip, when you use a bit of braid like this, just um, apply some flux onto the braid as well because that will uh, help it. So I'm just going to do that now. Just like that, just take a brush and uh, just put some onto the braid itself. And hopefully we should be able to wick all of that up clean. Let's try that now. Okay, and we're going to do this one here as well. There we go, and that's good enough. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to clean the board up. We're going to see what we're going to do next. So if we put the switch onto the board here, but you can see the other switch, there is a bit of space here between the switch and the edge of the board. It's not right on the edge. And if we take the new switch, and I'll show you what I'm planning to do. If we put it, let's say, around about here. Yep. So if we fit the new switch around about there. Okay, we can come back a little bit, I suppose. So if we take the new switch, and if we fit it around about here, like so. Then what I'm planning to do is I want to drill a hole here on the side, on this side here, and I want to install a piece of metal like this upright going into the side here. So this is going to go inside here. I'm going to drill a hole here, and I'm going to fit this piece of metal into the side here. And uh, that will create an anchor point for that part of the switch. And then what I'll do is I'll drill another hole somewhere here on the board and I'll bring a trace in from here to here from the other side of the board. That way leaves me plenty of space to glue this switch down and give it some extra strength. And then finally to top it up, what we'll do is we'll put some solder mask around the switch to strengthen it as well. And I think that should be, uh, should make it very, very strong. So let's do that now. I'm going to go away, I'm going to drill those holes, and I'll come back in a bit. So I've managed to drill a hole near the first anchor point on this side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of uh, metal inside. And if you can see here on the back, there's a little point here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder that on here, to that there. So that will give it a bit of strength when we anchor the switch to this uh, pole or this bar here. And the second hole has already been created as well. That hole there that you can see in the back, this is the one, let's have a look here. So this second hole here, this one here, I'll bring a line through here and I'll connect it to here because that's the switch. This is where it's connected to the other side. So I can bring one through here and I can connect it here and that should be fine.
What I'm also going to do is I'm going to etch out some of the PCB under the switch. So when we glue the switch on here, it's got something to adhere to. Uh, because it won't stick very well to a smooth surface. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to apply a bit of cold press glue to the bottom of this switch. And then we're going to sit it on the, um, the PCB. So let's do that now. We don't want to get it too close to the tabs because we don't want to cover the solder area. But uh, this looks like it should be fine. Remember, this is just to set it on the board. Once we sold all the tabs, then it will be solid. This isn't the main strength. This is just to uh, to get it sitting exactly where we want it to sit. We're just using this glue more, really, for alignment. And once we sold the anchor points, that's when it will be solid. So I think that's good enough for now. Now we're going to try and sit down here as best we can. That looks about right compared to this one, which is about that far in. So this one, I guess it does look about right. Maybe slightly a bit more from this side. Yeah, I think that's, that's okay. The glue seems to be sufficiently dried now, so what we're going to do is we're going to go around and we're going to start soldering those tabs. Let's put some... Uh, Flux on here, just a little bit. Should be enough. Should be enough. Time to do the other side. And let's have a little inspection of that and see how strong it looks. Is it fully covered? Oh yeah, that's fine. How about the back side? Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, that's fine. Now what we'll do is we'll solder the one tab at the back here. Okay, so I think we can see that. Quite clearly from there, put some flux on it. Yeah, that's fine. Solder down from both sides. Oh, that's okay. And now all we have to do is that last line over there. So let's clean this up so far anyway. What we've done, let's uh, get some moisture properly on a brush and let's clean this up. And then we'll continue with the rest of it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece of thin copper wire, it's about 0.3 mil, and uh, we're gonna take it through here, we're gonna solder it here, and we're gonna connect it to the back of the board. So let's do that now. 
Right, so to help hold this in place, what we're going to do is we're going to use a bit of solder mask. And um, then we'll be able to uh, move it around to where we want. So as you can see, I've managed to create a ring here with the copper wire. And that's going to be enough for me to solder that on to that pad over there. So let's do that now. And that should be fine. Okay, so we flipped it over and as you can see, this piece of copper here needs to go and connect into here or this point here. But what I'll do is I'll just connect it here um, because it'll be a bit easier. So let's do that now. I'm just going to solder that down first and then I'll deal with flattening it out. And let's get that soldered down. Now what we'll do is we'll just clean it up and we'll apply a final layer of um, solder mask around the switch and uh, over this exposed copper here just to give it the final strength and protection that it needs. So as you can see, that's dried nice and hard. And uh, we're going to turn it over and we're going to cover the other exposed bit of copper on the other side. And we should be good to go. So here we go. Here's our bit of exposed copper. Just going to push it down a little bit. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, let's put some solder mask here. And let's cover this part here. Okay, and we want to cover this bit coming from over here as well. So on the other side, where this copper piece comes out from here, I just want to give it a bit more protection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit more solder mask here, and then. Uh, we should be done. It's always best to go over your work once you've finished and double check everything just to make sure uh, there isn't anything that you haven't left out or overlooked. Let's get that inside here. And I want to get on the other side here as well. If I can see that. Yep, that looks fine. Just add a little bit more. Here. That's perfect. Okay, so the back side's done. As you can see here, nice and solid. The front side is done. We have the two anchor points which are connected uh, nice and strong and sturdy. We have the rear solder point here, which is connected fine. This bit here is connected to the new line and it's protected nice and solid here with the solder mask. Now all that remains to do now is to take it back onto the demonstration table and do an RF test on it to make sure that the buttons do work correctly and the fob does emit an RF signal when the buttons are depressed. So right, so we're back at the demonstration table now and as you can see that's quite a nice clean job yep i'm quite happy with that what we're going to do now is we're going to put the battery in and we're going to do some rf tests on it so here goes get the battery put it inside all right so the battery's in and let's put it on our rf tester and let's press our original button first right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press the original button first this one here okay as you can see, it's emitting a signal, 433.8 megahertz bandwidth. And then we're going to press our new button, which we fitted here. 
let's press that and you can clearly see that this is also emitting a signal so both of the buttons are now confirmed working well that was a uh, quite a long video a bit longer than i would have liked it to be but sometimes they just have to be like that so you can show everything in detail and uh, how to do the actual repair so that's it for today we're going to wrap it up now and i'm sure the customer will be quite happy with that as always bye for now and have a nice day